Hello and welcome to the Gridcast. I am your host, Danny Cox, and with me is my co-host. He is a box owner and grid enthusiast, and he has such an amazing voice that he sings Frozen songs better than Idina Menzel. His name is Conan Bruce. Conan. Let's build a snowman. <laughs> all right, so the uh, Gridcast is an internet-based TV show bringing you all the ins and outs of the NPGL and the sports sweeping the nation grid. Before we get into the quadrants today, we want to give a shout out to uh, Gary. He's a San Francisco Fire fan who told us to try out Anchor Christmas for the beer. Thanks for the tip, Gary. Let's give it a shot. Clinky clink. Mmm. That's tasty. That's a tasty beer. So, we have a little scale over here, the Gridcast beer rating scale. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give that a mm, 65 out of 100. Really? 65. So, 100 is like a rock star beer. It's like just went off the charts, right? So if you're listening to the audio-only version, Danny went over to the whiteboard, and he's giving it a rating. Now, it's my turn to give it a rating, and I'm going to give it a solid 57. So a 62 and a half, you punk. Why are you making me do that? Gary. There we go. There we go. Gary, you made it over the middle, man. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to think we're going to have some bad beers come uh, come our way. This one was pretty decent. I like it, though. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's a seasonal. So, a little uh, heavy. It's a little heavy, right? <laughs> no, 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 no big deal there. Right. All right, so today on the show... I'm actually going to um, have a little bit more now. Okay. So today on the show, we got uh, in quadrant one, we're going to touch on the grid score a little bit, and uh, we have some special guests from DC Brawlers, Phil and Justin. DC Brawlers are going to talk a little about what they're doing with uh, the team this year, and in quadrant two. Yeah, so uh, again, with the uh, the grid score, we're not going to uh, dig into the weeds with this this time. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is bring on some league officials or an official next episode, and they're really going to get into the uh, nitty-gritty of the grid score. And uh, in quadrant two, we're going to bring it back down to the local and amateur level, and uh, Phil and Justin from DC Brawlers are going to uh, give us some info on how they are affecting the local level, the amateur level, and uh, what that's going to do for the, uh, the professional league. Yeah, and then quadrant three, <coughs> we have... Uh, uh, Nate Schrader, three from the time, Tribe. three time CrossFit Games competitor. Yep, Nate Schrader is going to join us on the show in Quadrant Three. Uh, Connor's got a great interview with him. Yeah, so Nate, uh, a 2014 season a Phoenix Rise. Uh, Nate's a great guy. He's uh, another military guy, so I a little biased there, but uh, no big deal. We got a great, um, great interview with Nate. And then Quadrant Four, as always, uh, we're going to just tell you what's coming up in the future. Got a lot of stuff uh, coming in. Uh, this is going to be a busy month. So without further ado, let's uh, start our grid race and head on over to Quadrant One. Quadrant One. All right, welcome back, folks. We're in Quadrant One, and we have our first official guest hosts for Yay. Quadrant One and Quadrant Two. Give it up for Phil and Justin. Woo woo! Yeah, Justin Bizarro Thanks is the. Hey. Well, thank you guys uh, for inviting us to the Gridcast Sandwich, where uh, we get to be <laughs> the brawler meat in the middle. Huh? There's oh. nothing like a big slab of meat. Uh, it's delicious it's meat. It's all about the brawl. I meat. love being this close to four men. It, it just <laughs> thrills me. So Justin Bizarro is the CEO of the uh, of the Brawlers, and Phil Pitsky is the COO, the Chief Operator of the Brawlers. Love that. You love saying that, don't you? I do. Yeah. It just yeah. it kind of gives me a grid boner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag grid boner. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hashtag grid bro- boner and brawler meat. That's all. <laughs> brawler meat. Hashtag brawler meat. This episode is going to take off already, <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> well, thanks for coming, guys. So uh, last episode, we talked about uh, the grid score. So uh, we got in touch with the league, <clears throat> and I know you guys have some opinions on this and how it plays out for the teams. Uh, we kind of came at it from the athlete perspective where I kind of broke it down, and I was like, hey, does it marginalize this kind of person, you know, specialist versus general generalist? Of course, as soon as we put the episode out, the next day the league puts out, like, more rules and <laughs> how it works, right? Uh, so our timing was a little off. But uh, if you guys can give some insight, like, how you look at the grid score, what it means to you as a team. I think the, uh, the most important thing to understand is that the grid score is giving us the ability to rate players uh, and categorize them, um, whether or not they'll be professionals, uh, development players or uh, amateur players initially, or at least give us an idea what, what area to put them in initially to, to start to uh, analyze them uh, better. 
the um, I'm not a coach, so I don't I don't fully know, but I think that it standardizes it in some way that that's beneficial. It's not like a random test where they're going to react on the grid. I think there's going to need to be five additional tests probably when we get to the pro days to truly evaluate. Um, but in grid, the mo thing that matters the most is cycle speed. Obviously, lifting heavy things like Taylor does is uh, pretty important, but it's not only lifting those heavy things. It's how fast can you do it and how fast can you do it without dropping it or uh, continuously. So. so whereas last time we were talking about <coughs> how it may – focus on the general athlete, you're saying that um, with this version or with the grid score, that you can actually see the spikes of the different specialties of the athletes. Yeah, I think it depends on the coaches um, and, and what trying to spot, uh, which spot you're trying to fill on your roster. Um, the, uh, it'll skew towards obviously barbell specialists or, or body weight specialists or generalists and you can see how their individual score in those individual five events uh, lean um, if you want a barbell specialist obviously you lean more towards the barbell elements that are in the grid score excellent cool so um, let's move on from the grid score because I think there's some cool stories here about how you guys started up so one of the things that I wanted to ask you guys while you were on the show right, was right. Uh, a I mean so this is kind of a two-part uh, you, might, you might need to take notes uh, how did the brawlers come to be? And really the big question is, what did it take to build not only an NPGL team, right, National Pro Grid League team, but a winning Pro Grid League team? So definitely want to let Justin start off on this one. <laughs> um, I was uh, sitting around my office, and uh, I uh, got a phone call from a friend, and he said uh, a friend that I played soccer with and, and sports with growing up and – spent some time over in Europe playing soccer with, and he's like, uh, Bizarro, there's this uh, really cool thing I found on the internet. I think you would really like it a lot, and there's a rumor going around my company about it. Um, take a look at it. You like starting up businesses, and you like sports, and, um, and putting together things like this. I, I think you should take a look at it. So um, I was doing CrossFit at the time, so you knew that, so that sparked my interest. And um, I took a look at it, and I'm like, wow, this thing's pretty awesome. Um, they're putting teams together to uh, to compete on a professional level uh, that hasn't been done before. I mean, if you look at CrossFit, it's sort of an amateur. And I was like, well, we could actually create a professional sport. And it always interests me uh, to see new industries and how they come up from a business perspective. And this was the opportunity. Uh, so from there, I talked to Justin Kotler. He's like, this is the next natural progression to the sport. And um, how did you know Justin? Um, I was um, uh, rehabbing my shoulder from shoulder th uh, surgery with uh, Ashley Schmidt, who uh, works at his box, is now the general manager there. And um, so I'd known Justin, sort of talked to him, been at New Year's <coughs> parties and stuff. And um, I had seen what he had done with the CrossFit games and putting teams together and, and how well they work together. So I knew right away that if I was going to have a coach, it was just um, – that he would be the guy just because he's the only one I knew and it seemed like an opportune moment and he had success and seemed to know how to manage a team and know the sport of functional fitness or CrossFit or whatever pretty well and uh, then from there I'm like all right well I have a coach and I just need to put together a team and uh, Phil and I um, were with a group of uh, 21 people in our uh, MBA program down at University of North Carolina uh, the one Chapel MBA Hill. program and uh, I st started talking to people and picking up the phone and calling each one and s and trying to figure out who would be interested in helping out. And we got Brandon Kirby, who handles our uh, marketing. He's our chief marketing officer. He has a company called Centerfold Agency, which does marketing advertising. So we looped them right in. That's not the kind of centerfold that I know. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no not all pun all. intended. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so you guys are all uh, in, we're in the same like cohort for your MBA. Yeah, right? we're so in the same cohort. So I'm imagining you guys probably had a pretty tight bond already, like long before you got into this this organization. Yeah, yeah. we we had worked in teams quite a bit. Um, yeah, so we were in a program called the One MBA, which was an executive cohort type structure, and we were in classes for probably 16 out of the 21 months already, uh, going through the program. So. You know, this came about, you know, Justin says, hey, anybody interested in, uh, you know, staying behind for a presentation? You know, we stayed at the Rizzo Center 
And after class one day, we went through this uh, presentation that Bizarro put up, uh, and it was all about the NPGL uh, and an investment opportunity for the people that wanted to come out. So he uh, made some Kool-Aid and you drank it. Oh, well, wholeheartedly, yeah, <laughs> wholeheartedly. I tend to do that quite a bit, actually. <laughs> there's, so, no, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah so at that, that point, you had about 21 uh, MBA, you know, future graduates that were all about, you know, starting a brand and starting a company uh, in the NPGL. Yeah, so nice. Um, nice. with that, once I got them on board, I we started the conversation with MPGL, and they said, uh, uh, okay, you have to be down in Atlanta in nine days. Can you put together a presentation? And uh, and as a good MBA student, you said? And we uh, yes. we did it. Presentation, business plan, marketing plan. And and, uh, uh, and, the, ca- and the capital yeah. uh, that was behind it as well. Yeah, and all the capital we raised behind it as well in that time period. And then uh, so it takes, money, it takes money to start a business? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. A little sometimes, bit. sometimes. Um. But then we did the presentation. I flew home and I got a phone call the next morning say the team had been awarded. I needed to get back to Atlanta and uh, we were awarded the team. So it's been nice. pretty awesome. So we talked about this, I think, a little bit in the first episode, uh, how maybe the second episode, because we, we, we brought up the fact that the uh, Philly founders, you know, won't be operating uh, this season and maybe somebody will step in and, and take over there. But but it was kind of a reminder. Right. Uh, at the end of the day. Uh, a professional sports team is a business, right? We like to, you know, as fans. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a business. So if you don't have that business structure, that solid foundation, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to be successful. No, I agree. And, um, I mean, for us, it's always about putting the best product forward um, and, and doing what the fans like and, and making sure we're taking the fans' pulse constantly and, and seeing what, what how they react. Uh, making sure the athletes are, are taken care of as best we can. Um, and then uh, making sure the investors are happy. And then we have the right management team in place that are doing the things they, they need to. And, you know, we we react. Sometimes uh, there's bumps in the road and you just need to react as a group. And we formed an organization where each one of those elements sort of deals with the bumps in the roads with us and we're all in this together so it's uh, been pretty neat experience actually so that's awesome so um so this year you were the uh, npgl champs congratulations guys Appreciate and that. uh so what do you think it's going to take to do that again next year um obviously we want to win uh, you I'm do have to win to be the champs i'm pretty sure it'll <laughs> happen again but um uh, what, ca- what kind of wager would we do <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a good. Uh, I don't, I'm not much of a gambler, I guess. But uh, says, the, says the says the guy who started a pro team. Well, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe put a keg in here. Yeah. Oh, 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 hey, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to throw that down. <laughs> All right. Uh, I I think it's uh, you know we're gonna keep um, try to keep the base of the team together and, and build off of there, and we've we've got a great team and Justin Collar's done an amazing job of putting that together and keep our management team together, our CFO, Marsha Dawood and, and Brandon Kirby who, who aren't here with us. And then obviously Justin Collar and, and everyone else in the organization that's helped us out volunteer or, or whatever. It's been outstanding. So if we can mm-hmm. keep the group together, Jeff Berkey is another one. He's helped us out quite a bit and, uh, with, uh, moving around and logistics for the athletes. Um, so I think that's key. Um, is building uh, the management that's uh, necessary to handle some of these and be willing to give up stuff. I mean, we have a lot of people doing specific responsibilities because um, these teams grow quickly and there's a lot of stuff thrown at you in a very short period of time and you got to be able to adapt. Yeah, so. I think one of the things that's been really beneficial for us is having a network of individuals to, you know, like a depth on bench in the management side as well as the players. So. You know, when we need things from investors or we need to go out and do some sort of marketing or some sort of operations, you know, we have people with the right backgrounds to go out and be able to help uh, push that effort forward uh, and allow Kotler to still work on, you know, programming and make sure the athletes are taken care of uh, and we can kind of take care of those things in the background. Yeah, it just sounds like to me that you guys have a very good business foot forward. Yeah. Right? It, it's a lot of fun, too. I mean, when within one day of Kotler saying in the uh, draft tournament, uh, Taylor Strong- Stallings is stronger than you. Uh, we had a T-shirt <laughs> designed and made. Actually, we had two different versions. <laughs> right, kind of like right. the shirt I'm wearing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. My girl is stronger than you. Yeah. <laughs> what was the top selling T-shirt in all of MPGO? Uh, for us, um, it was uh, obviously the um, 
Actually, Jerry Taylor Ray. Stalling oh. was pretty close, but was Jerry it? Hill was yeah. Uh, yeah. the yeah. most sharp. Lo- lo- uh, local guy, I wanted to give him a little bit of a shout-out. Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and he's a forty-plus athlete like myself. Yeah, and you know we sort of played off the how much crap he got from yeah. for everything. I mean, it was legitimate, but we we had fun with it. And Jerry rigged Hill, <laughs> right, that's right. what we called him. <laughs> so we had the right. marketing team at Centerfold uh, designed a pretty great shirt. And, and I'm gonna, did, I'm gonna did give an amazing uh, job. I'm gonna give Justin some props here. I don't know if it was his idea or not, but I I, I know he did it because <clears throat> as you hear the story. So uh, when they won, uh, we saw that uh, I think automatically, like within a few hours, you had up on your website the uh, the, the champs are here shirts, champs right? Champs are here, right? So I thought to myself, like, hey, I'm buying one of these shirts, right? Because they're like, you know, first first year, first season, uh, and any other teams out there, I'll always buy your shirts too, right? So um, so I bought it, and then I get the shirts uh, in the mail. I bought like one of every size, by the way, just in case. And uh, so I get them in the mail, and I get this like two page letter. Right. And I'm reading through the letter, read the front page, and it's pretty cool. Like, it's pretty personal. It's, you know, you can tell it's, it's heartfelt. You flip it over to the back side and I finish it. And at the bottom is Justin's signature. Right. And it, and it ain't just stamped on there. Right. Did you sign every single one of those? Yeah. I, I try to sign each one. Um, yeah. and I write the letters personally. I just, um, I think it's, again, you need to be in touch with, right. with the That's people it. that are, are your customers and, um, uh, and fans and supporters and, you need to open up that door of communication. Um, I talk to um, fans quite a bit. If they have a complaint and they don't feel like they're getting the answer they need, they can come to me and I can address the issue from the top down and make sure it's handled properly. That's uh, awesome. So, yeah. and I, I mean, all the management's great, but sometimes yep. stuff slips through the cracks and you got to be able to have a door to walk through to, to handle it. And that includes athletes too. I have an open door with them. So, uh, so let's talk about, um, so we talked about, you know, the background of you guys how you came to be, and then we talked about maybe uh, what it takes to win next season. So now let's focus a little bit on uh, lessons learned. So what's your biggest lessons learned as a team, from a team perspective, on your first, the inaugural season? What's your lessons learned? What, what are you going to do? not do? How, how much time how do long, you have? Yeah, how long is this segment? <laughs> let's do the top four. <laughs> you know, I think for me personally, uh, you know, going through the organization, it's um, – you know, having the right people in the right positions with the right passion to do the job. You know, you got to be wanting here. You got to. This is a startup, like we talked about, and you got to want to be here and want to be doing the job and want to launch this brand and launch this company. Uh, and that's what we're about. And you want to have that passion, and that passion is what you have to find uh, with the individuals that are going to be running both from the athletes through the management organization. Justin. Yeah. Um, I agree. And. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's tough. We, it was, I mean, a lot of them. Uh, first season, you learn as you go. Um, but I guess the uh, most important thing that I learned or, or lessons learned um, for me is no matter what, you have to keep going. Uh, you have to keep pushing forward no matter how hard it gets or, or frustrating or... Um, as any new business is. Yeah, and, and it is. And, un, and w- you know, normal businesses, a startup, you, you take things gently and you go... And you move progressively, um, and, and you, you're sort of in control of it. With the MPGL and, and these teams, I mean, we were, for lack of a better term, shot out of a cannon with a rocket up our ass. And it's uh, <laughs> hold and, on, and, and, and it's hold on, and, and, and hopefully you have a steering wheel and can somewhat direct where you're going. But I mean, I like this that thing, analogy. That's good. I mean, we've only been a team now for um, for seven months. So, I mean, that's quite yeah, that's crazy to say, you that. know, we won a championship and we've put together an organization and we're growing and, um, you know, I think it's pretty awesome. So speaking of that, too, you also just got a new training facility, right, for the 2015 season or, or close? Yeah, we're very, very close to uh, signing a lease on a property, so I won't say where it is yet until we actually got pen, you know, ink to paper. But It's uh, probably in this area. It's going to definitely be in this <laughs> area, so definitely be in the D.C. area, so look out for that. But we'll be starting a facility here soon uh, that's going to have a full, you know, grid up, uh, grid set up with a full uh, rig and field. Uh, it's going to be double-sided, so, you know, athletes are going to be able to train on, train on it and race. Uh, and we're going to be doing a lot of things with the public to be able to come out and take a look at it as well, so keep an eye out for that we're really looking forward to uh putting that out how about your venue have you guys got that nailed down yet or are we still working on that or we're, we're looking at a few locations uh I, I can't say for sure yet 
but um, we're we're trying to stay within D.C. just because uh, we are a D.C. team. I mean, I don't mind going in the Virginia again or, or Maryland, but um, we want to try to stay true to the city that we represent and, and, and go in. And, um, you know, I think um, the thing about it is is we want to be able to pull people and make, make it easy to get to and the fans easy to get there and, and be able to do something that, that's impactful with them. Uh, so it's not just a match. We're making them a part of who we are. Um, the, uh, you know, something we, we spent a lot of time talking about with, with matches is that how the MLS has sort of these fan clubs and these supporter groups that they have and the passion that these fans show and, and the events they do beforehand and, and the way they involve the uh, fans and the players and the teams. Um, and it's sort of the model we use to, to base off of a lot of what we do. Um, yeah, you want to see some passion, man? Go to a major league soccer game. Yeah, can, yeah. can I go to a can I go to a match with a flag behind my back and start yeah, jumping yeah, up and if down? If you with have some a drum, I will give you front row seats, <laughs> <Nice. laughs> VIP seats. Olé, olé, olé. The referees I'm may totally not like in. it because they don't, won't be able to hear anything. But sure, yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, All right, guys. Well, we're uh, we're gonna get ready to move into quadrant two because we're excited to hear about what you guys are doing down at the local level, and I know you got some things to share. So, without further ado, let's just move on over to quadrant two. Quadrant two. <laughs> And welcome to Quadrant Two. Let's Quadrant Two. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Hard to, hard to clean the red My solo cup. My classy red solo cup. Mm. These things got me through college, by the way, right here. Doesn't it get through everyone through college? I think so. I think, so. I think so. They get me through life. <laughs> so in Quadrant Two, um, get you through the weekend. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so there's um, amateur grid league teams, or or um, or just amateur grid leagues popping up all around the country. There's a couple in California we've talked about before. And, uh, but you guys have something special going on um, with your three uh, farm club teams. Yeah, so uh, we, we're trying to keep a track of this all over the country. And uh, we were talking to uh, Phil and Justin, and uh, it, we, we just happened to be on the topic of like local, uh, local and amateur and regional kind of teams below the professional level. And they clued us in on the fact that they just got three farm clubs. Are we calling them farm clubs? Uh, yeah, minor league teams. Cool. Or, uh, Blazing the way. Yeah, so um, f- uh, we have uh, three teams, uh, Charleston Marauders, uh, the Atlanta Assassins, and the uh, um, Orlando Outlaws. The Orlando Assassins. Outlaws. Thank you. I like, I like that. that, yeah. And uh, we, we try to stay with the brawler motif and uh, our Outlaws. logo or whatever you want to call it. And um, – so for us, uh, it, it just was opportunity, and, and the guys at the SAGL, uh, Joe and Carl, they do a, a, an amazing job and have, have set up something special. And, um, you know, for us, it's uh, if we can be a, a part of a league and, and help build an ecosystem for this sport and build awareness, that's, that's pretty important. Uh, and then the second thing, obviously, uh, on top of that is we want to develop athletes and give athletes the opportunity to develop. Uh, and, and get involved in the sport. And so we're sort of, instead of building from the ground up, we're building from the top down just because the pro teams came first. Uh, so, you know, we do the minor league team. That's the next step. Uh, around those minor league teams, we sort of pop up training facilities around them and, and start to encourage high school and adult leagues and, uh, and, and start to actually build a sport. Um, because in order for this league to survive it's more than just us winning games and winning championships it's about um at the end of the day will this this sport survive in the long run and in order to do that we got to start now yeah, uh, I mean, and get kids gotta want to play grid right kids, yep. kids have youth to grow leagues up and, play and, uh, yeah. and uh we've picked some very strategic towns uh that didn't have much of a grid present yet presence yet when we chose those when uh, I Atlanta think of strategic, I think of Charleston, South Carolina. Well, that that was <laughs> that was uh, I like the strategy there. Strategery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's Columbia, an awesome town, by the way. Three different states and yeah, uh, yeah. and sort of the pull and and being able to develop the uh, the sport through each state. And Columbia is where the SAGL is is has got a pretty good following already. So we thought we'd just complement it by going a little farther out towards the uh, towards the ocean and, and picking up fans there. So, <coughs> if an I were an athlete that that's out there, and I think that I'm pretty decent, right, and mm-hmm. I wanted to join one of these teams, how do I do that? I mean, still the most important thing is the grid score, like we, we talked about before. Uh, you still got to do that because that helps gauge the athletes. 
Uh, and then from there, for the minor league teams, we are, we're hosting uh, combines um, for, or tryouts, whatever you want to um, refer to them as. Um, and uh, the uh, combines in Charleston will be January uh, 10th and 11th. Uh, Orlando will be January 24th and 25th. And the uh, Atlanta one is uh, January 31st and, and February 1st. Um, so for us, uh, and I believe the Carolina Thunder, another minor league team or our team that's part of the SAGL are, is doing something similar. And uh, we're trying to get as many athletes out there. They, you know, grid score helps, but then from there, see how they are and uh, bring them in the development system or for the minor league uh, teams and uh, and go from there. And, you know, some people will probably, if they, they do well enough, they'll, they'll get an invitation to the pro days for the brawlers. I, I think that's the goal. And with um, these minor league teams in the offseason, are we going to see any professionals um, participating there to keep the chops up? So um, we're not going to have professional athletes like we did in the SAGL Invitational. Um, uh, there's got to be the separation there. Right, right. Um, there'll be um, there'll be definitely some athletes on these uh, six teams though that'll uh, that'll train with the brawlers uh, that will move up into the development and they'll train. Um, you know, we're looking for probably if we have 18, we'll probably have eight additional uh, team members that'll train with the brawlers that'll be part of the minor leagues, but just sort of start developing them now. Uh, Justin Collar will work with them and, and our team, and they've started to put together a package that, you know, hey, now we're going to have, um, you know, 50 athletes possibly between the brawlers, the assassins, the marauders, and the uh, outlaws. So what does that look like, and, and how do we manage that? And so, again, back to the business, we've started, exactly. you know, first put the proper management and staff in place and then and then bring in the athletes and make sure they're taken care of and and PT and the physical therapists or, and everything like that. So it's take our same model um, that the DC Brawlers did, and we figured out a way to make it scalable, and we've just scaled it down and, uh, and, and basically used the same uh, – theory and, and, and business plan and everything else just on a smaller scale and the idea too was i mean we're you know we're scaling it down we're, we're getting depth and bench in the athletes as well as you know getting community outreach you know we something a long time ago we talked about which was the fans were going to be our number one priority besides that the athletes and the team uh so we had to figure out a way in order to reach the average person that wants to be a part of grid in some way shape or form you know the the npgl is going to be a very elite uh, number of athletes. So how do you reach to a broader base? Uh, and the SAGL provides a perfect uh, avenue to do that. So let me paint a picture here. So I'm a, um, so you guys got these uh, farm teams. And so if I'm a local, you know, if I'm, if I'm in Charleston or Atlanta or in uh, Orlando, am I, do I expect to see like local matches? Am I going to go see the, see the, those matches there? Or? Um, the, the first season we're still working through uh, the spring season. Um, uh, most likely it'll be a little bit of a controlled environment where uh, since it's the first season um, the matches will probably all be in Columbia South Carolina that has been confirmed uh, but um, I, I don't I don't dislike that idea it gives us time to to build our own training facilities for each minor league team and, and sort of start to uh, develop the uh, fan base uh, in the meantime to populate the uh, the training facilities I mean you know, 500,000 people at a home match for a minor league successful to me, at least in the in the second season. Um, so long term, though, I mean, long term, you're looking three, four, five years down the road. If I'm in Orlando, I might expect to see like local matches, right? Oh, 100 percent. And that's the Absolutely. real goal. And the, the minor league team is, you know, it's about the athletes and developing them, but it's also about developing the fans and, and getting more fans to the sport and getting those fans there to enjoy it and then getting more people to participate in the sport. Uh, it's already growing rapidly, but we need to sustain that growth. Mm -hmm. And so we need to start planting the proper mm -hmm. seeds. So, and if you haven't been to a grid match, uh, you know, the energy and the electricity that's in that stadium, you got to see it. And it's going to, it's going to translate down and through the SHL easily. Oh, uh, for real? I mean, if you've been to a minor league baseball game, so yeah, some of those are better fantastic. than a major league game. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you see a hustle a lot better in the minor leagues than you do in They're the They're trying uh, to make it, man. <laughs> They're trying yeah, to make it. Yeah. You got more college football <laughs> fans than NFL fans uh, yep. out there today. Yeah, and it, we want the athletes to have the, a place to develop their talent, you know, and maybe they're not quite ready for the MPGL yet, but, 
you know, they want to be able to develop in this sport and they need a, a place and the tools to do it. So Yeah, it sounds like you guys are putting together the structure to do that, and that's awesome. And I know that I mean, we've talked to some of the other, um, um, just broadly talked to some of the other teams and some of the other uh, areas, regions, that they're looking at doing some of the similar things. So if anybody out there is doing anything like this, you know, get, get in touch with us. And uh, But uh, more importantly, like, is there – so is there anything else uh, going on brawler-wise – um, that you want to talk about any you know if any folks you want to give a shout out to and well if there's other um, minor leagues starting up out there uh, obviously we'd be interested in putting in teams out there because yeah. any way we can help out the sports important to us um, absolutely absolutely and, and if you if you notice uh, the Orlando team has Taylor Stallings involved in it because she wants to help the sport grow and be involved and our Atlanta Assassin team will have uh, Lindsay Maneri. Uh, from the DC Brawlers as well, uh, participating and helping out to help grow it in the area. Pretty uh, good again. pedigrees there. Yeah. Not so too shabby. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, in an ideal world, I'd have a minor league team in each city where I have, we have an athlete um, to help them complement and, and build it and, and help them build their um, – um, the local towns and and gain more fans for them as well as fans for the sport and and the dc brawlers ultimately so if i'm a dc brawlers fan down in florida if i want to go see the uh, mvp of the year down in orlando i don't have to travel all the way up to dc i can go see taylor stallings right there and give her a high five right yeah yeah exactly and you know part of the other plan is is uh you know uh, getting people from all over to go to the matches so if we have fans developing in those areas we just park a bus there you know, get everyone on a bus, and then they come up to D.C. for the D.C. Brawlers game, and we totally brawl out for, for a weekend. Brawl out. Brawl, brawl, brawl out, baby. Brawl out. Take, take D.C. by storm. <laughs> yeah, and we talked about this on the last episode, and at the end of the day, you know, I keep saying this, and I'm, you know, trying not to harp on it all the time, but these, uh, the professional sports is, is a business at the end of the day. It's, it's got to it's gotta make, it's gotta make sense, and it's got to it's gotta make revenue. And for the fans, what does that mean? And Danny and I talked about this last episode where, there's basically three ways you keep a team alive. Uh, ticket sales, you know, uh, merchandise, and sponsorships, right? Well, so where does the fans fit in there? Uh, show up to the matches, right? C- come out and watch Absolutely. your team. Watch your team. And and first of all, like, there's one thing watching it on, on, uh, on TV, and I know you guys are going to have a lot of matches um, televised this, this season, but uh, if, you, if we get a home game, we've got to show up and brawl out, right? Correct. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, in th- another important thing about the awareness is, and we sort of float over it because the grids move so quickly, but having um, having co-ed sport and being able to, to present that in youth leagues where um, male and females are playing together through high school and, and there's no separation of the sport and more of an equalization of the sexes is, is pretty neat. And, uh, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of marketing and sponsorship opportunities where – me as a business person, I can now, you know, crack, um, uh, hit two birds with one stone, basically with one campaign. So, all right, well, we want to thank you guys for coming on out and uh, joining us on the show. So, uh, so thanks again, uh, uh, Phil and Justin. Appreciate and one it. One more last clink, and one then we'll uh, head on uh, over to Quadrant Three. Cheers, brawl out, guys! Cheers, brawl, brawl out, out, guys! So for Quadrant 3, we've got uh, Nate Schrader coming on again, three-time uh, CrossFit Games competitor, and more importantly, uh, 2014, uh, what year are we in? 2014. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, math magician. 2014, uh, I only had one beer for What first. a jack scratch. <laughs> 2014 uh, season <laughs> with the uh, with the Phoenix Rise. Uh, Phoenix Rise, sorry about that, Nate. We'll, we'll scurry away in the, in the interview. Uh, and uh, without further ado. Quadrant 3. And welcome to Quadrant 3. Our special guest today is the owner of Iron Forged Athletics in Fayetteville, North Carolina, a veteran of the United States Army, Hua, three-time CrossFit Games competitor and a member of the Phoenix Rise during the 2014 season. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Nate Schrader. How's it going, man? Good, good. Good. Thanks for being on today. Absolutely. Cool. So uh, I mentioned a few things in, in, our, in our intro there uh, about you, but I always like to ask people, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, maybe tell us a few things we don't know about you. Um, I mean, you hit, you hit a lot of it on the head, at least uh, since high school. But yeah, high school sports, two years of college, joined the military for five years, competing in CrossFit the last five years. Um, and that's been a big, big piece of my life. Um, Obviously, in the last five years, competing. Um, 
gym's been going well. We just expanded um, to a larger facility. So that's about it. Um, and then I just started a new company, Meet Your Mind. But that's that's, that's what I got going on. Got a yeah. daughter. Yeah. Yeah. How old yeah. your daughter? <clears throat> uh, 20 months. Oh, nice. I've got uh, several daughters of my own, so uh, I feel you. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun years to come, brother. <laughs> I'm uh, to it. Yeah, oh, they're they're awesome. I, I wouldn't know what to do with a boy. I've got all girls, so I'm, I'm all good with it. It's 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 fun. Uh, so one of the things I, I ask all all uh, grid athletes or people that have come across grid and and been around it is, I'm always curious to know how you came across grid, and then what was it you liked about it that made you kind of stick with it or you know brought you to it. Um, I think I just heard rumors of grid. To be honest, uh, rumors of there being a new sport and looking into it, and then. I think I listened to an audio, like an audio recording that was out there from Tony Budding about the sport. I don't remember where or who sent it to me. I don't even remember how that happened. And I just listened to it. I was like, man, that sounds like a really cool concept. I'm curious what's going to come of it. Um, and not much longer after, um, maybe like a couple months, um, James Callahan and John, or James Fitzgerald and John Callahan reached out to me um, about being on you know, the 2014 Phoenix Rise team. So it, it all happened pretty quickly, um, but yeah. Yeah, the whole sports kind of moved pretty quickly uh, yeah. from inception to first season and, and everything. And uh, another thing I'm always curious about is, is, is training-wise, programming-wise, things like that. So here you are, you, you've, uh, you've made it to you know, an elite level in functional fitness, going to the CrossFit Games, um, you know, being a, um, a CrossFit coach myself, knowing what it takes to uh, train uh, all year round, uh, prepare for the Open, get to regionals, then make it to the Games. When you look at a at a sport like grid, um, did you train differently? Would you have trained differently? How? Talk about that a little bit. Absolutely, um, it's a different sport altogether. You know, it, it has. I think that's probably the biggest um, biggest piece that's missing for a lot of people when they see it. Is you know they see it as just another functional fitness sport because it uses a lot of the same movements. But other than that, it's completely different. Um, it requires a, a different athlete to excel. Um, it requires a different type of training in order to be the best, you know, as the sport grows, just like in CrossFit, um, you can only get away with, you know, quote unquote bad training or training that's not as focused as, as you need it for so long as the sport grows. So, um, yeah, it's just, it, it requires a completely different athlete. It's, um, a lot, a lot shorter time domain, explosiveness, all the rules that go into it and strategy. It's, um, it's unique. It's a sport. So, <clears throat> yeah, a, a team sport, and then actually going, you know, uh, to the, to the whole league idea of playing one match at a time, and then I don't think people realized how fast and how explosive you were going to have to be out on the grid. And 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 uh, I watched this all through the season. I mean, how hard was it just keeping track of new rules and new, you know, just the little things about the sport? It was tough. Um... I mean, if, you know, if, if a word didn't get out about a rule or something like that, you know, it was like learning it on the spot. Um, I mean, that's any sport as it grows, I assume. Um, you know, nuances come out and the judges all have to be on the same page. And, you know, we've seen that in CrossFit as it's grown. It's gotten better and better and better. Um, but, uh, yeah. If there, is there anything that you, looking back, you know, uh, hindsight being 2020, uh, that you would have maybe trained differently in making that transition from functional fitness com competitions to grid? Is there anything you would have done differently? Yeah. I mean, I would have, I would have trained, if I had known that was going to happen, um, and let's say the games wasn't in the picture, you know, I would have trained specifically for um, the skills that are needed in grid, um, you know, the strength that's needed in grid. <clears throat> um, the stuff that pans well for a team uh, um, that wants to win in grid as opposed to CrossFit Games. Honestly, it's just being <laughs> the most well-rounded and prepared for the most random stuff possible at the game. So, 
Yeah, and the reason why I ask that, why I go down that kind of that question is um, what we're getting ready to talk to talk to you about, which is why I asked you to come on, is I think you're doing something really interesting here and uh, your experience and having that transition from functional fitness over to the grid, uh, understanding the nuances and the differences that happen, uh, you came up with uh, an idea of, of working with coaches and athletes and kind of getting them prepared for that uh, through some seminars that you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the thought crossed my mind really right after the season ended. Um, and I knew we were coming back home and I was like, you know, the turnaround time is really quick from the end of last season to now with the process starting December, really the very beginning of December, it started, you could submit a grid score, um, with this new system they have. So the turnaround time for people to prep for the sport, if they really wanted to, wasn't long. And so I wanted to kick things off really quick. Um, which it's just getting the word out there. But so the seminars are geared to really teach people what the sport is, what it isn't and what it is, um, and get, get some things cleared in the air, right, you know, up front at the beginning of the seminar. Um, and then dive into some, um, practical work and then hands on stuff. So how can you be more efficient in your movements for grid, not for CrossFit for grid or not for other functional fitness sports? Um, <clears throat> which, in turn means how can you coach your athletes to be more efficient for the sport of grid in the movements that they do? Um, how can you train uh, to prep yourself for various phases um, that they've now created with, um, you know, submitting a grid score for those five tests, you know, to getting to a pro day and being able to do whatever the coaches and owners throw at you um, and sell yourself well, you know, get their eyes on you, um, to you get to the combines you look like you know the sport very well at the combines. You know how to race. You know how to do transitions. You understand what the teamwork entails and where you fit into that so you can help the coaches even strategize. Um, and that's on the professional side, obviously, but it's the same concept for the amateur leagues that are popping up like the, the SAGL. Um, you know, you, you want to get on one of those teams. Um, you, it benefits you to really know how to train for it and where you fit in. Um, so that when you, you know, talk to a coach, you know what you're talking about. It's not like they have to try to build you from, you know, ground up. Um, and that's kind of the gist of it, going through all those facets, how to train for it, which means how to train athletes in it, how to move efficiently, how to race properly and practice in some races and stuff like that. Yeah, all this sound, uh, this sounds very developmental for, for, for athletes out there. And I've talked to several uh, owners of teams and head coaches of grid teams, you know, pro, uh, in the NPGL, and they all are talking about the things that you're talking about right now. As far as h how do if I so if, if you pose the question to one of these teams, how do I make it to the pro league? Uh, that's it. It's all those things you talked about: understanding the sport, not looking like you are confused with what's going on, like you actually understand and and you and because being fit is not enough, right? Right. I mean, you have the raw potential, but yeah. you know, is, a team, is a team willing to pay you for the raw potential in hopes that you make them better that year? I don't know. Yeah, plenty, plenty of great athletes show up to an NFL combine, don't ever make a team. Right. You know, so it got to be good. That's awesome. I think, I think there's a whole lot to be done to, to done with that. So walk us through quickly, maybe, with, uh, with uh, how the seminar is laid out. If we're, and you do the seminars, do you, do you host them or do you, go to the, do you go to their locations? or How does that work? Yeah, so I really just wanted to get it in the hands of the most, you know, out there for as many people as possible. And so I've been reaching out to uh, and linking up with gyms in all the major cities, um, really across the U.S. Um, I've had about, about six to eight set up. We um, we didn't do the ones in the past two, this past two weekends in Raleigh and Atlanta, um, really just due to a lack of, of registrants. I'm not sure if it was the holidays or getting the word out. So we'll reschedule those, but... Um, I'd love to. I'd love to secure some more cities as well. Um, but really, I'm trying to find where the most people are going to be to try to get as many people prepared for this season as possible. Because there's only a few months left for the SAGL and the MPGL, or any other amateur league. It's they're they're kicking off in a few months in one form or fashion. So. Yeah, time's running out if you want to get in this season. I mean, you've got uh, – now there's a lot of opportunities, I think, to go to the semi-pro level. It looks like a lot of people are going to have some minor league teams um, 
farm teams, like whatever they end up calling them, those right. are out there. And it, I think even if you probably went to a seminar like this, like that would develop you well enough to do well on like a minor league team. Probably you wouldn't necessarily have to make a pro. It'd be great if you did, right? If you if you right. made a pro team, but right. getting ready for for I don't want to call it amateur league because uh, many of these um, minor league teams will actually still be paid athletes. You know, they just won't be in the NPGL. So uh, yeah, that's a lot of good stuff, man. A lot of good stuff. So where can we find out more about it? I mean, if somebody wants to look into this. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm hosting them under um, a new company I started called Meet Your Mind, M-E-A-T, Your Mind. A um, little play on words, but essentially yeah. think of it as fuel your mind. Um, it's just something that we can all relate to in the fitness world. Um, um, www.meetyourmind.com, and there's a, uh, there's a seminar. about or Read about the seminars. Um, there's a tab where you can register for them and see the cities uh, that we're currently going to be kicking off in in the new year. Awesome. Hey, well, so we do this one thing with uh, every interview, guest interview that we have, and it's called Gridlock. And uh, we ask uh, 10 <clears throat> questions. We do kind of like a rapid fire thing. It's either an A or a B choice, nothing too crazy. Uh, if you'll, if you'll uh, play along with us, we'll, we'll knock one out real quick. Let's try it. You good for it? All right. So, uh, uh, again, don't don't think about it too much. Just go with your gut, right? So, um, lifting shoes, uh, old school do wins or new school Nikes. Nikes. Ketchup or mustard. Ketchup. Uh, movies, Expendables or Die Hard. Die Hard. Uh, if you're going to go on vacation, the beach or the mountains. Ooh, mountains. Nice. Are you coffee guy or tea guy? Coffee. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. Star Wars. The new one's coming out, right? Uh, music. Uh, hard rock or hip hop? Uh, hard rock. Out of the two. Uh, here, here's the kind of an inside question. Uh, Fort Benning question. Sand Hill or Harmony Church? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um Sam Hill. <laughs> Sam Hilton. I got it. Uh, all right, kids movie. I know you got a you got a daughter. So Frozen or How to Train a Dragon? I've actually never seen either of those. Uh, How did you get away with that? <laughs> not old enough yet. She's not old enough. Okay, yeah. well, trust me, there'll be there'll be plenty of them in your future. And last but not least, if you had to fight one of these two people, would it be Iron Man or Thor? Thor. <clears throat> All right. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for playing along. Hey, so uh, uh, M-E-A-T, meetyourmind.com. That's how we can find out about the seminars. Uh, we're looking forward to you. were talking to me uh, before we got on to the, uh, to the interview about uh, focusing on uh, uh, weightlifting as a, as a sport uh, this year. So uh, goal maybe for the Nationals coming up? or Yeah. Um, I just – We'll see what happens with grid. I, I don't know what the season details look like, um, and if you know, I end up on another team now that I'm a free agent. Um, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do the open this year. I'm not gonna focus on CrossFit. Um, really, just don't have the drive. I know I can. I can do it, and I know what it takes to get there. I just don't. It's like I don't want to be at the games enough to go through what I know it takes to go through that. And I like lifting a lot, so I haven't been able to focus on that since I started CrossFit more than like two months in the off season. Um, just having to focus on all the stuff I suck at, like chest of bars and muscle ups. So, um, yeah, so setting a goal for myself, I'd love to qualify for nationals, um, this coming year. That sounds awesome. And I think a lot of functional fitness athletes out there, uh, at all kinds of levels can probably relate to what you just said about the, uh, it's just a level of, uh, intensity that you do with all your long training for some of these competitions. So, Hey, nothing wrong with, uh, switching gears a little bit and, uh, hopefully we'll see you back out on the grid at some point and, uh, definitely want to see you up on the, uh, on the podium at a, at Olympic weightlifting uh, meet. Appreciate it. All right, man. Well, thanks for being on today. Thanks for taking the time. And, uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Sounds good. All Appreciate right, take, you having me on. Take care, Nate. All right, Bye. All right, guys. We're here. We are in Quadrant Four. Uh, I want to give a big shout out. Thanks to uh, Nate Schrader for doing the interview with us, and also uh, thanks to our guest host today, Justin and Phil from the DC Brawlers. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you having and, us out. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, hey, awesome. if you got anything that's coming up uh, or anything, any shout outs you want to do, whatever. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about the uh, pro day is coming up with uh for us in the DC area. It's going to be uh, February 28th. So keep a lookout for that. We're uh, going to be working with the Baltimore Anthem. 
uh, on this one. So it's going to be a combined pro day. Uh, more to follow here very soon, but we should be having it, uh, you know, an announcement here in probably in the next week or two. Awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I, I had some closing thoughts, and uh, uh, we had talked a little bit about earlier and uh, didn't get uh, follow the thought through. But, um, you know, our real hope here uh, in this sport and as an organization is, is to start developing youth and uh, bring youth in the program, kids grid, um, and, and gaining fans for the future. Uh, they may not make it all the way to the pros, but that's how fans are built from, from the youth foundations. Um, you know, maybe there'll be the Taylor Stallings Youth Grid Association one day, like Babe Ruth, you know, for baseball. That sounds, that sounds uh, pretty bad. Actually, <laughs> I just thought of a new business. <laughs> my, my wife might kill me. Let's on just that talk one. about I this just thought off of a new the business. camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Another one. Uh, I just gave someone an idea. Just yeah. patent right now, trademark, <laughs> yeah. uh, copyright. Uh, copyright, yeah. Um, which, which brings me, you know, to a good point. I, I just, you know, I obviously want to thank. Uh, my wife and and all the people that work for the DC Brawlers organization and their families for for supporting all this uh, and my family. Uh, thank you guys at Gridcast for uh, this is phenomenal for the sport. I mean the, this timing and what you guys are doing and, and awareness is pretty awesome and I, I really appreciate it. Um, I want to thank the fans and the supporters and uh, you guys have been amazing. Uh, I think we have the best fans in the league. Um, and uh, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Punchstone Food House, um, Cross Ropes, uh, Weighted Jump Ropes, uh, Clean Snatch Soap. Um, it's the best soap out there. Um, <laughs> uh, we have some. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty phenomenal. That's why I'm laughing. We got some of that stuff. Um, I'd like to thank Box Stalker, uh, belts and, and knee sleeves they provide for the team. And, and everyone seems to love them. They, they hit PRs all the time. <laughs> Um, that PR belt. Um, Marriott for our, our fantastic stays th this season and, and uh, uh, helping us to be comfortable while we were nomads this season. Uh, we were on the road more than we were home. Uh, oh My Bar for all the bars for the, for the teams before and after the matches. Uh, Just Be Natural, a uh, new supplement partnership we're working on. Uh, Jacob's Raw. Um, raw uh, beverages, salad dressings, and krauts and salsas. Uh, Atlas Power Wraps, um, uh, wrist wraps, obviously. Um, and RPM Jump Ropes and uh, Broaster Chicken. Uh, you know, we appreciate all the support. Thank you guys very much. Man, you can't beat an athlete without chicken. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't. There's I know. Two, there's two things you need. You need, uh, you need a belt yeah. and you need chicken. Yeah, you want to talk about something we <laughs> underestimated, how much an athlete eats when we came into this season. <laughs> we, were, we, we needed to double the budget for food this year. <laughs> when you said, oh, my bar, I was like, a bar sponsored you yeah. guys? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're still looking for one, so if any D.C. bars want to help us out in D.C. and be our official bar, hey, look this way. Hey, there you go. Give there us a call. Go. Shoot us an email. All right, guys. So uh, that wraps up our good race. And so uh, clean up all your jerks and snatches and drink your beer in batches and always dominate your grid matches. We're out of here. See ya. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Thank Thanks you. for coming.